Hello everybody, Mikey here again with Hologram, and this is the Hologram Dashboard Tutorial. In this video, we're going to be doing a deep dive into the Devices page. Now we have a couple other videos linked below, so if you're curious about those, so the Settings page, the Introduction, and the Overall View of the Devices page, I recommend going to those videos. If not, stay tuned. Perfect. So let's take a deep dive into a specific device. I'm just going to randomly choose Mr. Simmons Dash here, so I'm going to click onto that. You'll notice that this will take me to the devices specific page. And here, uh, we can pretty much split the page into three sections. This top header, which is the device information, um, this little submenu to the left, and then the action box, as I like to call it, um, here to the right of that. So starting with the header, you can see that we have the device's name, which we can edit. So here, type Mr. Simmons without the period, or I can leave the period, hit enter, and the change is made. Um, you notice that um, Mr. Simmons has kept the last digits of his SIM card on the device name, which is done by default, but is very helpful when you're trying to parse through a lot of devices um, based on the SIM card. Um, the SIM card or the SIM number, again, is listed here. So you can see that uh, we have it there along with device ID and link ID. And now these three identifiers are very helpful when you're trying to integrate with other services or use our REST API. So if you're ever looking for that information, this is where you'd find it. Uh, moving down, we have a gray box that's composed of tags, the usage this period, status, and then some other information. So tags, we went over a little bit earlier, but it's all the tags that um, are on that device. If you click on the little arrow, you can see that you have all the devices or the, all the tags available, and you can add more tags uh, to the specific device. So here, if you wanted to, we can remove it from active, and you'll see that um, it disappears. But again, because I don't want to play around with Mr. Simmons stuff too much, I'll just leave it as active. Um, the next box is the usage of this period box, and this shows you how much data your device has used in the period. Um, clicking on the inspect button beside that will actually open a new page with all the JSON information for the specific packets or for the specific usage sessions. So super helpful if you want to analyze where your uh, data is going. So you can pair those sessions with, for example, Wireshark logs, and that will give you a good idea of why, for example, um, your Raspberry Pi is using a certain amount of data and try to pin down like all the automatic heartbeats or auto updates that Raspberry Pi or whatever device you're using does and try to limit them um, to only the data that you actually want to send through cellular and reserve everything else for Wi-Fi or Ethernet. Um, to the right of that, we have the status. Uh, and there's three colors for status. Green, which means live. Yellow, which means that the device is in transition. So either uh, it's... Um, it's activating or it's being paused, and then red, which indicates that the device is paused. And there's three situations in which, under which your device would be paused. The first one is that you pause it yourself. So you can see that right here we have a pause data button. The second one would be that uh, your device um, or your account has run out of credit, and after 24 hours uh, you still haven't added more credit, then we uh, per, uh, temporarily, sorry, uh, temporarily uh, pause service until your account goes above zero again. And now the third uh, type of pause would be a data limit pause. So um, a little bit later I'll show you how to add data limits, but if for example you set a data limit of one megabyte and your device crosses that threshold, um, it'll automatically be paused for you so you don't have to keep track of that and you can make sure to manage uh, the data usage on your devices. Um, to the right of that is the APN information. So the a APN information is hologram specific. So all hologram SIMs are going to have hologram as the APN with no user, uh, no username and no password. But again, we put that there um, to make it a little more helpful. And then below that is the device key. Again, device keys are used uh, to interact with third-party systems uh, or integrations. So right now, Mr. Simmons Dash doesn't have a uh, a device key, but if I hit generate, it would generate one. And then you could regenerate them if, for example, um, something somebody sees it and you you don't want them to see it, or you just want to create a new one to start off fresh. So that pretty much covers that top header. Now moving on to the left side of the screen, we have the submenu, which is composed of uh, messaging, configuration, planning coverage, usage reports, routes, and logs. Um, so we'll start off the top. Messaging is super helpful. Um, this is actually the, the part where you can send cloud data messages, so hologram messages to your device, uh, through data or SMS messages. So starting with cloud messages, uh, you can see here that we can enter any data. So, hello, hologram. 
You see that we can also specify the port we want to send it to. So by default, it's at 410, but you can choose whatever port you want. We also give you the option of sending it through different protocols. So here you have TCP and UDP. Um, so depending on what you want to do, uh, you can click on those. Again, these messages go through data. So they would be billed to you because you get billed for both incoming and outgoing data. However, SMS is actually not billed to you uh, when it's going into the device. So all the SMS messages you send through the dashboard are completely free. All the SMS messages coming out of your SIM to uh, any other platform are billed. So just be aware of the little difference. Uh, but the nice thing about being able to send SMS here is that a lot of devices require you, set, require you to set the APN through SMS. So instead of having to purchase a phone number, which again, I'll walk through a little bit later here, um, and using that to send SMS messages, you can do it all from the dashboard for free. So again, here you'd say um, your message. So hola, hologram. Um, and then you, if you want to, uh, you can actually enter your phone number or a phone number that would receive the reply messages. So a lot of these services um, send an automatic reply every time you text them. So normally they would be logged under the device logs if there's no uh, from number. But if you enter your phone number, that would automatically, automatically be routed to your cell phone. So super practical. And again, this isn't just for setting NPNs. This is super powerful. And I encourage you to build this into your application. So if you have, for example, something sending heartbeats or telemetry data, and you want to give the option of, of getting more information without using too much data, um, you can, for example, have a SMS trigger that every time you send the SMS, it tells you uh, a verbose or it sends you a verbose message of the telemetry data. So again, super helpful. Um, and if you want to learn more about device messaging, uh, we do have this little link here below. We have a couple really, really great guides. So I recommend you check them out. Um, <clears throat> the next section, again, under messaging is simulate from device. And this is very helpful when you're developing your integrations, your routes, and trying to talk to third party systems. This allows you to send messages to the dashboard uh, or send messages from the dashboard as if they were from your device without actually having to use your device data. So again, this is completely free and super helpful when debugging. So you can see that here, Mr. Uh, Simmons actually has some information. So there's some topics up here as well as some data in JSON. You can see that we have temperature and humidity. So uh, this kind of tells me that this device is probably a, a temperature sensor or something like that that Mr. Simmons is playing around with. Um, and hopefully we'll be able to figure out that by the end of this video. Um, again, if you want to learn more about device messaging in the data engine, we have that link below. So now if I click on configuration below that, uh, we have a couple more options. So the first one is to configure inbound webhooks. So just like we have routes and integrations going out, we also have webhooks that are inbound. So this is how you would generate those. Um, and we do have that link for more on webhooks below that. Um, going back to the SMS option, you can, like I said, uh, purchase phone numbers. And it seems like Mr. Simmons has done that here. Uh, but if you, for example, uh, want to purchase your own, you can go to the configuration page and purchase it. And it's a monthly fee, usually around a dollar for, for uh, a phone number. So not that much. And you get to choose the country as well as I think the area code. So here you can see 808. So it looks like Mr. Simmons might be in Hawaii. Um, below that, again, we had the data engine uh, and the device key. So again, the device key was up here. Mr. Simmons didn't have one, but you can also um, show the device key here and generate it um, through the configurations page if you prefer. Uh, and lastly, we have device tunneling. And device tunneling is what you need to enable to use our Space Bridge tool, which is an amazing tool that creates a VPN between uh, your client computer and your SIM. So it's essentially like you have your device wherever it's deployed right beside you in the same VPN. Um, so to get started, you need to enable tunneling. And uh, for those of you who haven't checked out Space Bridge, I highly recommend it. It's an amazing tool and it's very well documented on our webpage. Um, so now let's move on to planning coverage. So we kind of went over this in the activation page, but if you ever want to update uh, that on your device and you can have on-demand updates. So unlike a lot of other carriers, we don't lock you down to yearly contracts. You can literally change your plan as often as you want. So to do that, you just click on update plan. It'll take you to the update plan page where you can change the plan information, uh, which we went over in the activation section. So I'm just going to cancel out of that. Um, but below that is another very powerful tool, which is the data limits. So again, uh, one of the reasons why your device would automatically get paused is because it's reached a certain data limit, which really empowers you to control how much data is using, how much data you're using. And I really recommend uh, enabling data limits for testing 
because I myself have uh, found myself in an infinite loop where I just keep on sending messages and burn through megabytes of data. Luckily, I caught it before it became gigabytes, but definitely something to be aware of. Um, to do that, you just click on update, and you can see that we have three options here. Uh, unlimited, no overage allowed, which actually only applies to the developer plan, so nothing below one megabyte in the monthly plan, so nothing below however much you're subscribed to on the monthly plan. Uh, but because this is a pay-as-you-go option, that device that option is grayed out. And then other, so clicking on other actually lets you enter your own uh, data limit. So uh, you can enter, say, I don't know, a couple, like 10,000 bytes. Uh, so that's entirely up to you. Again, very powerful and something that I encourage during the development phase, at least, to make sure that uh, you keep devices in, or data usage in check and don't, uh, don't have any unfortunate infinite loops like I did. Perfect. So... The next section is the usage reports. So I won't go over this again because this is the same usage report that we looked at earlier in the general device uh, section in the last video. Uh, the only thing I wanna highlight here is that it's the same information, but device specific. So if you wanna drill down into a specific device, this would be the page to go into. Um, and now we're gonna go over to the routes and logs page. Um, these two uh, items are gonna be covered in the next video. So the routes and console video or console logs are, the, are pretty much the same thing. I'm gonna uh, peruse over these very quickly, but if you wanna learn more about them, definitely click onto the next video link below. Um, so if I click on routes, you can see all the routes that this device is subscribed to. And you can see that Mr. Simmons has a bunch of routes. We have a temperature and humidity route, uh, an Amazon S3 route, um, and the temperature and humidity one is going to Losant. So I think I've, I've pinned down what Mr. Simmons is doing here. He has a temperature and humidity pinger, and he's probably graphing it using Losant. So uh, definitely something I'll, I'll talk to him about later. Um, but you can see all the routes you subscribe to here. You can also add new routes uh, through this page. And now uh, the last thing I wanna talk to, in this talk to you about in this video is the logs page. So the logs or the console page show you all the, the payloads or messages that you've received on the hologram dashboard. Um, if you go through the device page and, and the specific device, it'll be the data for that specific device. If you go through the console, it'll be all the data for all the devices. Um, so I just wanted to you, I just wanted you to see that in this video, but again, more information on that in the next video. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.